Welcome back to SoFlo RC Life. This is Justin here with you. As you guys can see, we got a nice, beautiful uh, speedboat in front of us. This speedboat is the Genesis uh, Twin Hull. So I went to the local hardware store and I picked up some angle aluminum and some flat bar aluminum. You're gonna take one piece of your angle aluminum and place it like so, so you're you don't want it like this, you want it like this, okay? On this side, you're gonna line it up on the back of the boat, and you're gonna come up a few inches past the front of the boat. That's where you're gonna cut your first piece of angle aluminum. Once you have two of those cut, then you're going to come halfway up the boat, somewhere right around here. You can come a little more than halfway if you like and you're going to make a slit right on the top piece of your angle aluminum there. Once you do that for both sides, you can start bending in each side until they meet in the center right up here. And what we're gonna do now is you're gonna start folding it in a bit Right, and it's gonna give you. There we go. Okay, and it's gonna give you kind of an idea of what it's gonna start looking like. All right. Now, when you fold it in, you can come around the other side and just cut off that little extra piece, so that way it doesn't flap over like that, and you have a nice clean uh, meetup point if that makes any sense. <laughs> All right, so we got that one done. We're gonna cut that in a second. We're gonna start bending this one a little bit as well. And just, it doesn't take much. Uh, once you have a little bend, as you can see, it just, it shoots right over to the center. So be careful not to overshoot it. All right, now we're gonna cut that little piece off. it up a bit, clean up your edges. And then okay, so now we're ready to put our uh, flat bar aluminum across here for bracing. So what I like to do is measure the boat Hopefully you guys can see everything I'm doing. Um, this boat is around nine inches wide, okay? A little more, it's, it's probably closer to nine and a quarter. Uh, I like to do an inch wider than the boat. So since this is nine and a quarter, we'll just call it um, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half. We'll see how that looks. So what we're gonna do is let's make, <clears throat> couple marks here we'll do 10 and a quarter and 20 and a quarter so we're gonna cut these two pieces we're gonna put one here and we're gonna put one here Once we have both brackets installed, uh, now we can secure the front. Uh, the way that uh, you can do this is um, you can just throw a rivet right into that and that'll be perfectly fine. Uh, or you can make it look a little nicer. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just 
make a straight line right here. We're going to cut that top piece off, line it back up, and make a straight line on this one, uh, matching that one. And we'll throw a cup, like a little plate, uh, right over that and bracket that plate on. Uh, I think it'll look a little better. Don't forget your safety glasses, guys. Alright, next step, once you have both sides cut, you're gonna get yourself a little, cut yourself a little bracket. And throw it right in there. Okay. Line it up one more time. Make our hole here. strong foundation for the frame of our boat let's keep going all right next we're gonna be working on the suspension and uh, axles uh, I'll show you a little example here so you can see the suspension works all the way around and all it is sorry about the lighting guys um, all it is is a teeter-totter type effect. Uh, double axle is going to be a little bit more straightforward and easier because uh, you only have two axles. Here's your center point, and as you can see, that's just how it works. Uh, for triple axle, uh, it's pretty much the same, except you're going to make two holes in the center. Uh, one is going to be for your teeter-totter effect, and the second one, as you can imagine, is going to be for your axle. So we're going to put your our axles through this top hole here. All right, let's keep going. All right, next step is to start cutting your uh, axles. Um, what I'm using is a threaded rod from Home Depot. That's the size right there. And I'm also using some brake line. Uh, you can find this at a any automotive store that's the size right there um, these two sizes they work well with each other uh, so for example this is the threaded rod we're going to put it inside of the brake line uh, so that way we don't have any flex uh, this is steel and uh, you know, threaded rod, if you guys haven't worked with this, you see how bendable it is? So, flexible, should I say? <laughs> um, then, what I like to do is, I like to line up my tires um, about a quarter of an inch away from the frame, uh, give or take. And that'll give you a good measurement for the... Sorry about that, guys. That'll give you a good measurement for uh, your size threaded rod uh, for the axles. Right. We're gonna cut three of these here, and we're gonna cut three pieces of this a little bit shorter. So for this one, we're gonna measure on the inside of this bracket here, this brace, to the inside of this one. So your piece will be a little bit shorter right around there. All right, it should look something like this here. So once you have that all installed, what you're left with is a pretty simple suspension design. <laughs> all right, let's throw a couple more pieces what we're going to do next is we're going to cut some small pieces of the brake line um, on this side of the bracket. All right. So as you can see, each piece of uh, brake line on the outside of your bracket 
that'll hold your wheel in place. And now you have uh, some working suspension. All right, I cut a few pieces of uh, flat bar aluminum and angle aluminum. Uh, these ones are uh, two inches long, and uh, yeah, this is from the angle aluminum and flat bar aluminum there. All right, so this is what I've come up with um, out of those pieces that we cut, and what I'm essentially trying to do is uh, just raise the uh, C channel that we're going to be using. And we will attach it to the frame here, throw a uh, bolt and uh, nut through there. And then after we're done uh, installing both of those, we can move on to the uh, fenders. All right, let's keep going. All right, I think we're ready to tack it all together, guys. Um, I'll show you what I did here. So we have three inches clearance and it goes, opens up to three and a half inches down here. Uh, the reason I'm doing that, and you can't really tell the difference uh, by looking at it, so that's, that's a good thing, but I think that half an inch is really gonna help when, uh, when he's pulling the trailer up onto the boat from the water. So we have three inches, we have a good, good inch of play. So when he pulls in to the C channel on the trailer, um, it'll align itself and uh, I think that's gonna work out so all right we're gonna tack all this together and then we'll move on to the fenders now I installed uh, this foam and uh, all it is is um, it's AC uh, foam tape to wrap around your condensate lines you can find this at Home Depot as well uh, so it's got double-sided tape on this side I just stuck it on here, uh, trimmed off the rest. I came down a little bit. Uh, that way, I don't want him damaging the boat when he when he bumps this. It'll just ride right up. Um, and then, as far as the fenders, uh, this is a aluminum sheet. Uh, you can find it at Home Depot as well. I think this big old piece um, is like under ten bucks. Uh, you won't need that big of a piece. Uh, you can get a little bit smaller for uh, cheaper. So this piece right here is going to do both fenders. Uh, it's about an inch and a quarter I've measured. So it'll come out, it'll come out to about right, right there. This is uh, what I do after I put the shoe goo on there, just to hold it in place. Um, and once it's completely dry, uh, you have a nice uh, solid piece to work with. All right, once that's all dry and you got your sides folded in, uh, you're gonna cut some L brackets and uh, shoe goo those on. And then once that's all dried, you can, you can shoe goo it to your frame or you can drill holes and put a couple rivets there. All right, so that's pretty much uh, what you're looking at, something like that. And then we'll throw a license plate right on the back there, tie it all in together. All right, we have our uh, fenders uh, installed. We used the rivet gun for here, and we secured uh, each side with a dab of uh, shoe goo on the inside to keep this nice and sturdy. Uh, next, we are moving on to the final bracing system for the front of the boat. Uh, kind of something similar to that there. So what we did was uh, got a piece of flat bar aluminum right there <clears throat> and uh, got another piece of flat bar aluminum. And what we're doing here is we're going to attach this to that. And then we're gonna add a <clears throat> piece of foam uh, on top of that. Uh, note one thing, I don't know if you can see that, I bent it slightly down so there's no lip that will catch the boat when it's coming up. Uh, granted, you know, that foam is going to come down, but we don't want nothing lifted right here. 
So we want a nice smooth transition. Uh, after we secure this up here, uh, we're going to finish up the uh, tow hitch right here and going to put a, got a license plate, spare tire, and our uh, guide markers there when we're coming, pulling back into the trailer from the water. All right, let's finish this baby up. All right, fellas, she's just about done. So we got a couple final touches here. Um, before I attached this piece, I just wanted to show you what I did. See, this is nothing but your C channel, uh, bent out a little bit to match the curvature of that. We're gonna throw a couple rivets and tack it into place. And then we'll put our, uh, our hitch uh, connection up front there. Uh, other than that, uh, we are pretty much done. Um, we got a couple spare tires, but we're not going to put those on just yet. Uh, going to give it to the owner and let him decide where he wants the spare tire or if he even wants it on here. So we also got a license plate and a little license plate frame. The, the frame is nothing but uh, the leftover rivet pieces that were discarded and otherwise uh, garbage. Uh, so kind of repurposed those, made your frame, and you know we had to do it SoFlow RC lifestyle, endless summer license plate. Um, these things right here, you can really use anything, guys. Uh, anything white uh, that replicates um, your little bumper guards or whatever you want to call those. Uh, I was even thinking about possibly enclosing it with one more piece right here to make it uh, more solid. 